Okay, good morning. So today what we're going to talk about are a few things that are going to lead us into the American Revolution as colonists. So here are some things I want to talk about. So it came out of the French Indian War with the Treaty of Paris 1763, which basically kicked the French out. So it leaves the British and the colonists pretty much dealing with each other alone, except for one entity. And they're not going to be very happy with each other. They feel like they were disrespected. The British felt like the colonists were weak and were ineffective soldiers, couldn't handle their own problems. The colonists felt like the British were bossy and really tried to overtax them. There's, there's a lot of tension coming out. Also with this, a new tension is going to surface, and that is going to be about dealing with Native Americans. You see, the issue is that the Natives are going to be more in line with the French, and so they become very frustrated with the British and the British colonists. And so in 1763, Pontiac, a Native American, is going to lead his people to start rebelling. They're going to attack forts. A lot of people are going to be killed a lot of colonists. And so this is going to lead to some frustration. So a couple of key things are going to happen. Uh, Pontiac does end up dead, but the British are going to send him several invested blanket or uh, smallpox invested blankets, excuse me, for the purpose of killing out many of the natives because they were particularly susceptible to smallpox. And so with this, the British are going to issue the proclamation of 1763. They finally defeat Pontiac, and what they decide is that there is not going to be any more settlement of um, the Europeans past the Appalachian Mountains, even though they got all the way to the Louisiana uh, territory, all the way to the Mississippi River. They're like, yeah, that area, that's going to be designated for the natives. This is going to be designated for you, so don't go past that. So let's talk a little bit about the revenue. King George has a new financial measure man, manager, a guy by the name of George Grenville. And Grenville is going to push several measures through Parliament that are helping to re uh, to bring back in revenue to pay for the war. And those are going to be, first of all, the Sugar Act, which is the first revenue raising act, followed up by the Quartering Act, which basically said, hey, look, you guys house the soldiers. It's what they do in Europe during war at this time. So you house the soldiers, then we don't have to pay for housing expenses for them. And then lastly, the quartering, the Stamp Act. The Stamp Act was different than the Sugar and the Quartering Act and any other act. And the fact it was the first direct tax. It was the one that you could literally see when you would go to pay the would say not so fast, add this to the payment. And so this is going to lead to the formation of the sons and daughters of liberty. Now, at first, this group is going to be focused on intimidating tax agents. They're going to tar and feather them. Their most effective strategy is going to be, of course, the boycott. That's where they're really going to shine. But with this, they are going to uh, start intimidating these people. So the Stamp Act Congress kind of meets out of this group, and they're going to send a letter to the king that basically says, look, we don't like the Stamp Act, but we're loyal to you, so can you remove this? So this goes before Parliament, and Parliament does respond by removing the Stamp Act. However, they're going to turn around, and they're going to send back the Declaratory Act, which the Declaratory Act is what I call the I'm sorry, but act. They basically say, yes, we removed the Stamp Act. We did what you asked us to do. However, we have every right to tax whatever we want to tax. And so we're going to do things like that again. So you may as well just get used to it because it's going to happen. Well, this was very offensive to the colonists. And this is when we enter kind of stage two of the events leading up to the revolution. And in stage two, Parliament passes the Townshend Act. The Townshend Act is going to, first of all, uh, replace Greenville's previous act. Townshend is going to be the new leader, and he is going to be this new person for the king. And so these taxes are going to be on tea, glass, and paper, and they are indirect. Remember, the colonists can't see it. And so that amps up that non-importation, that boycott movement again. The purpose of it is to pay the salaries of the colonial assemblies because the colonists really weren't paying near their fair share of taxes compared to what British people normally paid. Uh, and so what's going to happen here is they're going to also issue a writ of assistance. This allows the soldiers of Boston to search at any time for any reason. It's basically a perpetual warrant that says, look, I can come and search if I think that you are um, stealing things. And 
boycotting and bringing in illegal goods. And so these are going to be replaced in 1770 and the boycott ends, except a small tax is going to be left specifically on tea to kind of, and that is followed up by the tea tax. The tea tax or the tea act rather said that the tax on tea would be removed on all tea or on just the Dutch tea. And so the Dutch tea is tied to parliament. Many of them have stock in it. And so this is going to lead to future problems. So the Boston massacre is what's going to happen next. There was a resentment of troops being in Boston. This leads to bloodshed on a snowy day in 1770. Colonists are harassing guards until they fire into the crowd and the guards end up killing five people, five uh, citizens of Boston. This included an African-American man by the name of Crispus Attux, who is the most famous death here. Basically, this is used to inflame anti-British feelings. Uh, it is an incident that gets out of hand, but it is not quite as elaborate as the way it is portrayed in the media. Imagine that. The Committee of Correspondence is going to initiate this point by Sam Adams, and their whole purpose was basically to spread ideas of revolution. They were kind of a little bit of a gossip chain, a complaining chain, but they do spread these ideas. So this is going to be followed up with that T Act that we were talking about. That comes in 1773. And so because that tea has been limited on Dutch tea, Dutch tea is going to be arriving in several places, particularly in Boston Harbor in 1773. So a group of people associated with the Sons of Liberty are going to go into the harbor loosely decorated to look like Native Americans. Not really. It's freezing. They're going to dump 342 chests of tea. Now, there's a lot of mis mixed reaction to this. Some people say, hey, this was wrong. Others are like, well, it was wrong, but, you know. And so the British are furious because this is destruction of private property. And so they're going to pass what's called the Intolerable Acts. Now, the British refer to these as the Coercive Acts. Basically, what they say is, first of all, the Boston ports close until you pay for the tea. Secondly, they reduce the rights of the Massachusetts legislature to self-regulate. They also say any trials that are between British and nationals and British colonists have to be held in Great Britain because they feel like they can't get a fair trial in the colonies. It's probably true, but it seems like more of a slap on colonial rights. And they also are going to expand the Quartering Act. This is going to be followed up by the Quebec Act. The Quebec Act are going to lead to jury trials and Catholicism, basically the expansion of jury trials and Catholicism in Quebec. Now, the people in Quebec were really okay with this, but the colonists were furious. And so you start to see the birth and the talking of enlightenment ideas, natural laws, natural rights that humans have. And so you begin to see these ideas of fundamental rights are being birthed, which is going to lead us to the American Revolution.